Ibrahim Olufemi Gajabia Mila. God bless you all. More worrisome is that while we are still expecting the resolutions of the remaining Houses of Assembly, we received a letter... Delay by many states to ratify the Constitution Amendment Bills worries the National Assembly. The disruptions could lead to blackouts. A blackout is not a collapse. And Minister of Power appears before lawmakers, discounts claims of national greed collapse. A warm welcome to the program house ticket your window into the activities of the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Many thanks for joining us. My name is Dihelia Mamza, your regular guide on the program. This week's edition of the program comprises report from the committee rooms where different committees held public hearings to discuss several matters of national importance. We also have a report which captures an update on the Constitution Amendment project as lawmakers briefed the press following recent happenings from the State Houses of Assembly. Details of this coming your way in a moment. Please stay tuned. The entire purpose of the legislative agenda is to direct our legislative resources and efforts in a coordinated effort to ensure the well-being of the individual in a life of safety and freedom. That is a high ambition, but it's well worth the effort. We have passed landmark legislation to fix our oil and gas industry, reform the police, and reorganize the corporate administration system in our country. We have considered and passed meaningful legislation that impacts all areas of our national life. Thanks for staying tuned. The Joint National Assembly Committee on Constitution Review says only 11 states out of the 36 have considered and voted on the 44 constitutional amendment bills that was transmitted to them six months ago. The Deputy Senate President and Chairman of the Committee, Senator Ove Omo Agege, made this known while speaking on behalf of the co-chairman of the committee, the deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, Ahmed Idris Wasi, and the committee as a whole, during a press briefing at the National Assembly. This was on Tuesday, 18th October, 2022. 25 state House of Assembly are here to consider and vote on these bills. So far, only Abia, Akwa Ibom, Anambra, Delta, Edo, Kaduna, Katsina, Kogi, Lagos, Ogun, and Oshun states have successfully considered, voted on, and forwarded their resolutions on the 44 bills to the National Assembly. More worrisome is that while we are still expecting the receipt of the resolutions of the remaining Houses of Assembly, we received a letter from the Conference of Speakers of State Assemblies informing the National Assembly that the remaining states will not act on the 44 bills unless the National Assembly passes four new bills they have proposed in the letter. The bills they propose to seek to amend the Constitution includes one, a bill to establish state police, two, a bill to establish state judicial council, three, a bill to streamline the procedure for removing presiding officers of state houses of assembly, and four, a bill to institutionalize legislative bureaucracy in the constitution. Senator Omo Agege speaks further on the position of the committee on the refusal of the remaining 25 states to consider and vote on the amendment bills, as well as the letter by the conference of speakers of state assemblies in this regard. The National Assembly is in no way averse to acting on any proposed bill or memoranda appropriately tabled before it at any time during the life of this National Assembly. However, it is legally and constitutionally inappropriate for the Conference of the Speakers to use the four bills as a quid pro quo to act on the 44 bills the National Assembly has transmitted. It is clear 
and we cannot overstate that this letter is not in keeping with the obligation the Constitution has placed on them regarding the constitutional amendment. Senator Omo Agege noted that the co-chairman of the committee, Representative Ahmed Idris Wasi, was unavoidably absent at the briefing as he was away on an international assignment in Senegal. Some stakeholders, which include the National President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, Comrade Ayuba Waba, and the National President of the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees, Nolgi, Comrade Akim Ambali, also shared their thoughts during the press briefing. The position of NLC about the state police was very clear. Check the history of Togri in Nigeria and also insecurity. How do we actually empower political talks to now become bandits and even become Boko Haram. Check the history very well. It started with political toggery. And clearly, our position is we are not matured for that. If a state governor can deploy political talks for peaceful protests, you should know that if he has state police, he will do worse than that. And so this process was very transparent. And I think we should realize all of this. And Nigerians also will have the opportunity to speak to those issues. This is why it's important for the process to be very transparent. If people have forgotten, we have not forgotten. It's well documented. Before 1999, we don't have Boko Haram. We never had bandits. We never had Togri. How do we have them? And how do they acquire arms? As of today, are we happy about the situation in the country? About insecurity? About poverty? about denial, about joblessness across the country. And we have a national assembly that come out boldly to address these fundamental issues. And somebody is saying, unless you do this, we will not pass the amendment. It's an attempt to blackmail the national assembly. That is the truth. Can you say because the national assembly has not considered your own selfish interest? That is why you must hold the country to ransom for us in labor, we are ready to engage them. We are ready. The basic fact is that they are delaying this constitutional amendment passage because of local government autonomy. Let's put this quality. That is the reason. Away from the press briefing by the Joint National Assembly Committee on Constitutional Review, the House Committee on Power held a one-day public hearing on investigations on the recurring collapse of the national grid. Various stakeholders were invited to give accounts on the recurring collapse with a view to finding lasting solutions to the power problem. Let's have details of this in our next report as compiled and presented from our studio. The House of Representatives Committee on Power on Thursday, the 20th of October, 2022, held an investigative hearing on the recurrent national grid collapse. Feel free to let us know exactly what are the challenges. In his welcome address at the hearing, the chairman of the committee, Representative Magajida U Aliu, noted that the hearing was not organized in order to find faults, but to find solutions. We understand the image of the problems and we are here to give the required legal backing and assurances of funding to this sector. So we expect to hear the truth, nothing but the truth, from you. I'm happy we have your policeman here, NAC is here. They will be able to punish appropriately where there are sanctions. So let me reassure you, feel free to speak your mind. Feel free to talk honestly. Feel free to let us know exactly what are the challenges, what are the problems. A black is not Speaking a at the hearing, the Minister of State for Power, Jedi Agba, said that the epileptic power supply experienced across the country this year is caused by system disturbance and disruptions and not national grid collapse. And disruptions could lead to blackouts. A black card is not a collapse. But black art can result from collapse as well as disruptions. But this one we have had this year, we've had four of them, but they have not been collapsed, is disruption. And disruptions have been as a result of, there could be human factors, there could be 
uh, implement equipment factors, there could be um, political factors, there could be other factors. For instance, sometime last month we had a blackout for a short while. It was due to, and we saw on social media, young men switching off um, the, 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 the system. That's not the collapse. That's deliberate vandalization. That's the, the, it's, in fact, it's sabotage. If you ask my opinion, it's sabotage. How can young men go and switch off, putting the nation in blackout, just because of some grudges, which, by the grace of God, is a union matter. I am handling that. And I assure you, Mr. Speaker, that that matter is being brought to, to, to book. And at the end of this week, our report will be submitted, and uh, the unions and us will agree on something, and it may never happen again. On his part, the managing director of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, Sule Abdul Aziz, said that the total system disturbances of the national grid was on the decline from 2017 to 2021. From 2017 to 2021, the incidence of total uh, system disturbances has been on the decline, signifying sustained improvement in grid stability with every passing year, as illustrated. Just as the chairman of NAC mentioned, in 2017, we had 15, 2018, we have 12, 2019, we have 9, 2020, we have 4, 2021, we have only 2, and this year so far, we have 4. This is attributed to the transformative measures instituted through various interventions in the sector, such as the grid expansion program initiated by the federal government, enhancing synergy among industrial players in the power sector, remedial action scheme developed by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, enforced GEMCO's to operate unit on pre-governor pre -governor mode, implementation of under-frequency load shedding scheme, development of IoT, BPN technology by TCN in-house for grid visibility. However, in some extreme cases, severe disturbances can discredit a part of the system or crash the whole, accumulating impartial or major system disturbances. Why a grid collapse? The Executive Secretary of the Association of Power Generation Companies, Joy Ogaji, who spoke on behalf of power generation companies present at the hearing, said that the problem of epileptic power supply is attributed to obsolete infrastructure and excessive volatile load. There is excessive volatile loads, mostly through steel mills. The Nigerian network has over 50 steel mills, TCN can confirm, that is connected to the uh, grid with varying... Um, load from 3 to 35 megawatts, going from minimum to maximum, to minimum in a continuous cycle from 6 to 10 minutes. Uh, the Commissioner um, Engineering can also confirm, and also the Chairman NEC, they are very seasoned uh, engineers. Weak, another reason we found out is weak TCN infrastructure. Without blaming the MD oil or any of the staff, most of the uh, TCN equipment are over 25 years old. In power, you know, once you put some members of the committee also shared their thoughts and asked the invited stakeholders down. questions during the hearing. My question is um, to Dr. Joy. Dr. Joy, certainly you have changed your, your, your story. You are talking about you shifted from collapse and what I know about collapse in English language is downfall, breakdown, disruption, failure or crash. And what I know about in English language about disturbance is riot, violence, trauma or agitation. Your presentation, it's okay. Don't shift your position when the big men are talking. What you have said Technically, technically is the correct issue in the power industry. Because you are a key player, you are a generator. So let's keep it honest. If even you check dictionary, interruption, collapse, whatever you call it, a system collapse, system failure. So uh, why we feel the need for this motion is because there are some certain questions we want the transmission, I mean the stakeholders to answer. And uh, part of this uh, question is, do we really have willing capacity, transmission willing capacity? TCN, we have a capacity of 8,100 megawatts. And the highest we transmitted was on phase March last year, where we transmitted 5,801 megawatts. And we have always made this point, 
there is no day when generation company will say we have generated so much megawatts and TCN is unable uh, to evacuate it. For the organization taking the lead. In bringing the public hearing to a close, the chairman of the committee, Representative Magajida Aliyu, said that the committee will come up with a technical committee that will be saddled with the responsibility to come up with a report. We are not here to find problems or blames. We have had the problems, we have had the solutions, and inshallah the committee will do the need for. You are still on to house tickets, bringing you reports from the committee rooms. Our next report is from the House Committee on Women Affairs and Social Development's public hearing on a bill for an act to amend the National Center for Women Development Act 2004 to enhance the functions of the center and rename the center as Mariam Babangida National Center for Women Development and for related matters. The report as compiled is presented from our studios. Keep watching. <laughs> Giving her welcome address at the hearing, the chairman of the committee, Representative Adeomi Onanuga, said that the National Center for Women Development has played a vital role in skills acquisition, training and empowerment of women and girls since its inception. This dream came to fruition because of one person, the former First Lady, late Mrs. Miriam Babangida. Hence the need to rename the center in recognition of her vision and laudable contribution. While giving his opening remarks, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gbaja Biamila, who was represented by Representative Johnson Oguma, noted that the center plays an essential role in promoting the welfare of women in Nigeria through policies, programs and advocacy efforts across the country. The organization, in collaboration with other institutions of federal government, state governments and local and international development partners has for years now been a center of tireless advocacy and sustained efforts to improve the fortunes of Nigeria women. This is a commendable legacy. He added that the bill to amend the National Center for Women Development Act 2004 is a bid to ensure that the center is better positioned. There is still much work to do for Nigeria women. There is a lot of work to be done to dismantle those practices, beliefs, and attitudes that victimize women in economics and exclude them from decision-making in politics. We still have to protect the rights of women and girls, honor their dignity, and give them opportunities to rise to their highest potentials. The National Center for Women Development must play a vital leadership role to ensure success in achieving these goals. For this reason, the House of Representatives has marked on this effort to review the enabling statute of the center and make necessary improvements to ensure the center lives up to its serious responsibilities. Representative Inkiruka Onye Jocha, who is the sponsor of the bill, also gave her remarks at the public hearing. So I join Nigerian women to key into the uh, Miriam Babangida dream and name, let the government name this development center after her and then begin to look at those plans that she had many years ago and see how much we can do in our own times. Before stakeholders' inputs were taken at the hearing, the chairman of the committee, Representative Adeomi Onanuga, shed more light on the efforts of the late First Lady Mariam Babengida in establishing the National Center for Women Development. Um, Honorable Nkiruka said um, that Mariam Babangida did a lot for rural women. The truth of the matter, however, and the reason why I am all for us supporting her changing uh, supporting us changing this center into her name is because the center was built on her strength she was the person who gathered people together to build that center all the government did for was give her the land 
she went around looking for the money, looking for sponsors, looking for all the things that she needed to make it happen. And it happened. And in the center, if you go to the, if you are a regular visitor to the center, you will see that all the people who contributed, their names are there in a plaque. So I don't think we'll be doing her a favor. I think we'll be doing ourselves a favor. And we'll be, we'll be you know, uh, making sure that what is deserving is given to that or the person who, it is, who is also deserving. Laudable. The Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Dame Pauline Tallinn, on her part, commended all those in support of the amendment bill, describing the public hearing as timely. In commending you for bringing this public hearing, it has come very, very timely. Just last week, Saturday, we are in the week of the celebration of the International Day, because the United Nations, the United Nations has declared 15th of October every year. And once it declares 15th, from the 15th to the end of this week, it's a week of celebrating the rural women. So we celebrated International Day for the Rural Women last week, Saturday. And such celebration, I don't do it in Abuja. We moved to a remote village. We were all there with the DJ and most of these women. It was a big celebration. And I don't know whether some of you watched it on TV. And we acknowledge some women who have paid their dues, who have been uh, educating, supporting, and promoting, empowering rural women to know their rights and to contribute their quota. On that day, we gave her a posthumous honor. We celebrated and honored her last week, Saturday. And her daughter was there with her sisters to receive the honor. So this public hearing is highly commendable. It is coming at the right time and for the right purpose. She Some of the stakeholders present at the public the hearing shared their thoughts on the bill. The need to amend the act cannot be overemphasized. This is expedient to enhance the relevance and functions of the center and align the functions of its governing council with other existing acts to allow for prompt and effective administration and resolutions of the issues in the center. Our recommendations, honorable colleagues, honorable members, that the long title which provides in court an act to establish the National Center for Women Development be amended by inserting the word Mariam Babangida to now read as an act to establish Mariam Babangida National Center for Women Development for the general purpose of designing developmental programs and activities for the advancement of women in Nigeria. National Council for Women Societies Nigeria is an umbrella organization of all women uh, NGOs. We've been working hard to see that we have achieved to promote the women in Nigeria, especially the girl child education. This great woman came in no time. She achieved what we have been struggling since 1958. So there is no how we can do in this country that will forget Mariam Babangida. As we call it a day on this week's edition of the program House Ticket, don't forget to keep your comments, observations and questions coming in through our social media platforms showing on your screen. We will do our best to get our representatives address them accordingly until we meet again. Enjoy the rest of your day.